In this video, I'm gonna show you how to wire the QS-60 to a motor using 220 volts. So that way you can wire the motor in forward, let it come to a complete stop, and then go in reverse. So the QS60 is probably going to be the most popular drum switch that you can find. If you just did a quick Google search, you're going to find a hundred of these for sale on multiple different websites and they are dirt cheap. Um, all I'm going to say is you get what you pay for. Now when you order your switch, it's going to come with two different wiring diagrams. One will be on the inside of your cover, this one, and the other one will be on a little piece of paper. Uh, you can also find this wiring diagram on the internet when you Google search it. So if you don't, yours doesn't come with a piece of paper, uh, just go ahead and Google search it. Or you could test it with your multimeter just to double check. Um, ultimately, this one up here, all it's doing is letting you know that some of the terminals are connected internally and you could hook up multiple wires and get the connection the way you want. This is actually kind of cool. What it's really saying is that like these two terminals are ultimately the same terminal. So you could hook two separate wires up in there. It could make it really easy for you to um, hook up multiple wires that are getting switched. Now, the problem with this is that my switch did not come with any screws or any actual connecting hardware. So I was not able to do that. So later on when I wire this thing up, you won't be able to see that. But if you have more hardware and you wanna put get screws or maybe yours will just come with it, you'll be able to do that. So don't get too caught up in this one over here. When you're looking at this one, this one's actually going to be the diagram to, to determine where the actual contacts are connecting inside the switch as you're going from forward, off, and reverse. The main thing that you can notice here is that the, these terminals are switching. You can also notice that we're not using some of the terminals. Um, that's why this, this uh, diagram is so important is that the ones that aren't getting used are actually connected to the ones that we are using. Um, but like I said, the main thing that you're gonna see is that the top two terminals are connecting across and then these four terminals are just totally switching. Now, when we're working with 120 volt motors or 220 volt motors, we know that we can't just swap the polarity. We actually have to go in and change some of the wiring internally. And we're going to be using some of these contacts to do that work. Ultimately, it really comes down to the contacts here and here, um, which are the same contacts to do that switching. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna show you guys the motor. We're gonna talk over the schematic on the, the nameplate of the motor, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we'd wire these two things together. Okay, so here we have our nameplate for our motor. Hopefully your motor will look something like this. Um, more than likely, it might just be a different numbering system or a different coloring system or of some sort, but ultimately it is the same thing. So hopefully um, I'm, we were able to take this and apply it to any motor that you have. Um, notice over here, we're gonna be working with the 230 volt side. I've had a lot of questions over uh, the difference between like 115 and 120 and then 100 or 220 and 230 and 240. Um, it's just a variation in the power. Um, so if you have 240 volts coming into your house, you're able to hook up to a 230, okay? So don't get, it's just variation with the amount uh, plus or minus in that voltage, okay? Now, if we start looking at the actual diagram over here for our high voltage side, we can see that line one will need to be connected to T1 and T8. The T2, T3, and T6 will just be insulated and connected together. And then finally, L2 will be connected over here to our T4. Now, just to point this out, because I got another question on this was, these line one and line two, this is your incoming power. So these are your power wires coming into the motor. And then again, this just means insulated. So you're just connecting all those wires together. Now to swap, uh, to change from clockwise to counterclockwise, all we need to do is switch six and eight as it says down here. So we'll just take six from here and swap it up to here and take eight from here and swap it back down to there. Um, this is one thing I do really like about the switch is ultimately this line two right here in this T4, you have your own switch at the very top of that, uh, the switch just to handle that. So then you're really only worrying about this stuff right here, okay? So let me go ahead and we'll jump back over to the whiteboard and I will draw this out for you. Okay, now I've kind of got all of my stuff drawn up here on the whiteboard and we're gonna start connecting it up. Um, I do wanna point out over here to the side, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take this and cut it over. 
This is just the schematic to our motor, which I just went over. Um, and then if you look at our switch here, you can see that I went ahead and I threw an X and just the straight across. That way you can see which terminals are not being used and also which ones are getting switched, okay? So as I go through this, most of the time I'm thinking in my head, how can we make this as easy as possible? So the first thing that I think is super easy is this L2 to T4. That one's like the easiest no-brainer one there is because we're just gonna connect it over into this, these two terminals because they're always going to make connection no matter whether I'm in forward or reverse. Now I'm gonna go over here and I just have it written L2. Um, that would be again our incoming wire and all I'm gonna do is just come into there. I don't know if that was necessary. And then I'm gonna go up here to my T4 and I'm gonna go ahead and take it down and it's gonna be connected. So like I said, that is the easiest one to do and it's never gonna to need to change and it doesn't have to have a lot of hard thought process, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at my T6 and my T8 because remember on that schematic uh, written in the bottom, it said six and eight need to be switched. If I look at my terminals down here, I can see that there is a switch happening. It's getting across or it's getting going straight across. So that means that I either have to put six and eight on these two terminals or on these two terminals, all right? That makes sense because I'm gonna take the other sets of wires and I'm gonna bundle them up and they're gonna be able to swap, right? So what I'm gonna do is I even went ahead and I put mine on the left side. It was just simpler in my mind, that, but it could easily have been on the right side. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my T6, or I'm sorry, my T8, I don't know why I just said that, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go down, I think I actually, I think I'm gonna go to the top one with T8, okay? Then I'm gonna take my T6, and I'm gonna come down in between these guys. Sorry, this is getting confusing already. And I'm gonna go into this guy, okay? So, got my uh, T4 here, T8 in that one, and then T6. Now all I have to do is kind of hook up the rest of my bundles and it's gonna be super easy. So I need to, to finish up all of the ones that are going to be insulated and connected together. I need to take T2 and T3 and connect them into one of these two terminals. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just go ahead and put them into the top terminal. So we'll go ahead and draw it like this. This one, and if, if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and connect them together and have one wire going out to it, or I could take two wires and go into that terminal. Now, the last thing that I have is I have my T1 and I have my L1 that need to be connected. So if I wanted to, I could just take it over here, go ahead and jump down, connect it in there, and then I could take my L1, come down, jump, and it's gonna go right into that one, okay? And hopefully that's not super confusing. What I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna wire it together on the bench and show you it working. Okay, so figured I should give you guys a little bit of a lay of the land here before we start wiring because I'm not gonna be able to switch around and show you everything. Over here off to the right, we have our incoming wire, our L1 and our L2. Now, just so you guys know, L1 would be black and L2 would be the white wire and the green wire would be your ground, which I have going right here. Um, if you do get these uh, mixed up or switched, it's not gonna make any difference towards the, the wiring system that you have and it's gonna work the exact same way. But if you wanna be absolutely correct, L1 is black and L2 is white. Now, I have my uh, ground wire already going into the frame of my motor. Um, if you looked inside there, there's just a, an actual bolt that the ground wire is connected to. Um, this is just a nice safety feature, um, but I am working on a piece of wood, so it's kind of hard to have everything grounded. Now my switch over here does have a ground symbol for the switch but it doesn't have a ground lug that I can, I can find. So it's kind of difficult because this switch is all plastic, so there is no ground for this one. Uh, but hopefully you guys are grounding your whole uh, machine or whatever you're working on to make sure it is completely safe. But that's kind of my whole system here. Got my uh, distribution block, my motor, and my switch. Now, I want to uh, also point out right now that there is no fuses or breakers in this system because I'm ultimately just trying to show you guys how to wire the switch. Hopefully you guys are putting a breaker or a fuse or something that, you, uh, that you're protecting your machine with. Now, let's go ahead and start wiring this thing up. Now I'm basically gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start at the top of this switch and just work my way down. So the first one I wanna put on is over here on this side and it should be our L2. 
Next we have our top left. We're gonna hook this one up to T4. Taking our uh, T4, like I just mentioned, and we're just connecting those wires together. Okay, so we're back over on our right side here. We're gonna hook up this terminal. This terminal is gonna go to T2 and T3. Got my uh, T2 and T3 here. It's a little bit hard to see. I'm just gonna go ahead and connect those together and then put them all together with a wire nut. Back over here on the left side, we're gonna hook up our uh, next terminal. This one will be going to a T8. Um, this is one of the switched wires. So we've got this one as being switched. This one's also gonna be a switch wire. So this one will be a T6, but you could easily flip flop these. It, it really doesn't matter. But T8 will be our next one. Now we're just hooking up our T8 to that same wire. Okay, so we're back over here on our right side. This one will be our L1 and T1. So when I hook this one up, I'm gonna have two separate wires, just so that that way I can have one wire go to the motor and one go over to my uh, distribution block. If for some reason the switch does not come with like extra screws, you could actually use this secondary screw right here, um, which would make things so much cleaner, so much nicer, but it didn't come with the screws, or at least the one I got didn't come with them. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hook up our T1, which we got right here. Just wire not one of those wires that I connected into the switch together. Now we're connecting our L1 into that other side, or that other switch that we have, or I'm sorry, other wire we put into the switch. Okay, now for our last terminal, this one will be going to our T6. Like I said, this one could be swapped. This is another one of those um, the, sw the wires that do get swapped inside the switch. Just hooking up our T6, it's the only one we got left. Just gonna go ahead and throw my cover back on just in case we have any problems with electricity. Don't wanna get electrocuted, you know. Okay, so now that it's all hooked up, when I press the forward, Looks like it's spinning in, I believe, the clockwise rotation. I'm sorry, counterclockwise rotation. And then when I go to the back, it is spinning in the clockwise rotation. Okay, that's how you wire together the QS60. If you made it this far, I just wanted to thank you. If you like the content, please hit the like button. And if you have anything you'd like to suggest, or just let me know how I'm doing, please put it in the comments. At this point, most of my channel stuff is based off of somebody's comment. So shoot me a comment. Tell me what I need to learn about next. Um, again, just want to thank you for watching.